Hi guys, Adam again. In the last video, I said that I was done with data management and that I was going to get into calculations and discuss the power of ones. I realized that I missed a very important step and I will introduce uh, part of the power of ones in this video, but we also need to go over probably the most important step of this whole thing. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to create a column. And I'm going to call it ones. The purpose of the of ones is you just put a one in every single column, no matter what. And you'll see why in, in later videos. But like, for example, attendance is pretty close, except you can not attend and have a zero. So the way that you do this is to pick something in your data set that is always true, no matter what. So we can't use these numbers because these numbers change and numbers aren't always present. There will always be a code name and a date in, in this sheet, no matter what. I'm going to pick code name. So the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to say if there's a code name. So if code name is not equal to blank, then one. But if not, it can be blank. It doesn't really matter because there will be a code name, and I know that. Now there's a one for every row in that column. I'm just going to move ones to the end. Doesn't really matter, but it's a good habit to get into moving the latest calculation or latest piece of information to the end. And if you're like me, this is unrelated, but I hate scrolling sideways. So you'll notice, I mean, my columns are are narrow widths, um, and I can't really see the column headers. One one workaround to this is to increase the row height, which I'm going to do now. I'll make it 80 or something. And rotate the header sideways. So I'll select all the headers, rotate them, wrap the text, and maybe just organize it a little bit. Now I can see all the column headers without having to um, make make a column wider. Now the most important thing: planning. You need to be able to under you need to be able to answer the questions: why, how, and what does it look like. Why, why do you need this dashboard? Why is it going to be useful for me? I want to use it to auto-regulate the class structure by seeing uh, the readiness of the class on a daily basis and how it compares to other days. I want to be able to understand the class exercise habits and how they relate to the class's well-being. And I want to be able to, to identify at some point students that are that may be having issues in class or with exercise and see how I can help them. For example, if they ex exhibit certain readiness habits, like poor sleep on certain days, um, then that's something that I could potentially help them with. Then how am I going to do that? The way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to compare the results of a given day or today with a date range or results from a date range or with the annual average. And I'm going to use colors to quickly identify outliers or high or low days. And I want to be able to select metrics um, instead of displaying all the metrics all the time to keep the dashboard concise and for me to have control over the information. And now the next question is, what does it look like? So a good thing to do, actually, a good practice to have is to design what you want it to look like and then follow that design with your uh, with your calculations and your visualization. Because the calculations that I use are going to be dictated by the filters that I want and how I want the chart to be designed or how I want the dashboard to be designed. So an example here is I want my readiness data for the most recent and then a date range that I get to pick and an annual average. And those are some comparisons I'm going to make to make that happen. I'm going to need a filter or something that I can manipulate, um, which is going to be a date range to get that date range data based on me and my control over that date range. Then I want to see some injury statuses, again, using that date range and exercise data as well. Then maybe I want a chart or two where I can filter by, by the end date of the chart so that you know, maybe it shows the past five days start, start or ending at a certain date. And I want to be able to select the metric that I see in that chart instead of displaying all the readiness metrics. 
So that's it for this video, but it's imperative. It is incredibly important that you plan out exactly what you want to see and how it's going to work before you start designing things or else you're going to waste a lot of time and a lot of energy going back and forth. And you need to have an overall why. You need to have an overall goal for what this information is going to tell you and how it's going to help you on a day-to-day -day basis.